All right. Ready? Stand up and say good morning. Good morning. Oh, first thing I should probably mention, you're probably thinking, he looks different. Yes, I do. Got a haircut and even trimmed my beard a little bit. So yes, a little strange to see somebody looking all so different. <clears throat> there we go. That's out of the way. Good morning, first grade. Are you here? Yes, Mr. Coulter, we are here. <clears throat> I hope you'll say the morning verse with me. So that requires you to stand up, stretch your arms out, and say, The sun with loving light makes bright for me each day. The heart with sacred power gives strength unto my limbs. In sunlight shining clear, I am reverent. The strength of humankind has so graciously been planted in my soul that I with all my might, may love to work and learn. Toward us comes light and strength. From us rise love and thanks. Someone came knocking on my wee small door. Someone came knocking, I'm sure, sure, sure. I opened, I listened, I looked from left to right. Not a creature was stirring in the still, dark night. Mmm, spooky for Halloween. Five little pumpkins sitting on a gate. The first one said, my, it's getting late. The second one said, there's a chill in the air. The third one said, but we don't care. The fourth one said, let's run and run and run. The fifth one said, I'm ready for some fun. Ooh, went the wind, and out went the light, and five little pumpkins rolled out of sight. That's a good one to say to your younger brother or sister, because they love little games that go like that. I did put on my website the kindergarten um, puppet show of George and the Dragon and I sent everybody the uh, link to the Festival of Strength and Courage where a lot of teachers uh, did some songs usually the children all do the songs and uh, plays and little things skits for everyone to enjoy but this time the teachers did them um, because there's not so many students on campus so I hope that you watch uh, both of those two things, the kindergarten puppet show of George and the Dragon and the Festival of Strength and Courage uh, with Mr. Learned comes out with, wearing his armor and uh, does an introduction. And then there's little songs and different things done by various teachers at the school, and uh, including me. And uh, we sing a song, me and Uncle, Uncle uh, Mr. Uncle Todd sing a song about um, it's the it's the Spider-Man theme song, da 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 da, and uh, we sing we change the words to talk about Uncle Shane, our dear campus steward who takes care of so many things at school. Anyway, we did the song, we did the poem, we did the morning verse, and now it's time for the day and the date according to my uh, thing. And also want to make mention thank you. Um, to Millie who corrected my Spanish I was saying 11, 12, 13, and 14 wrong I had it in my head differently than how it is so we'll do it correctly this day and uh, we'll start with today is Wednesday Wednesday Day, C A Y, Wednesday, ouch, October fourteenth, two thousand twenty. So 
I do this every day so that you get used to understanding what the day and the date are and what they mean and all that kind of thing. Hopefully it's not too small on your screen. Today is we can, Wednesday, October 14th, 2020. Will you say that with me? We'll say it slower. Today is Wednesday, October 14th, 2020. In Spanish, we would say it's hoy es, that means today is hoy es miércoles. I forgot to check, octubre, I think. Catorce. 2020. Yeah, 14. 14 or 14. Hoy es miércoles, octubre, 14, 2020. I hope I got that right. <laughs> I'm always willing to be corrected, but I won't. All here by myself. No one's there to raise their hands. Oh, Mr. Coulter, Mr. Coulter, you forgot to do the day and the date, or whatever I might forget to do. Um, so after the day and date, um, we usually say the days of the week in English and Spanish, so let's try to do that. Let's start with Spanish this time. Miércoles, that's today, Wednesday. Miércoles, jueves, viernes, sábado, domingo, that's the weekend, and then lunes, martes, and back to miércoles. One more time together. Just try. Miércoles, jueves, Viernes, sábado, domingo, lunes, martes, and back to miércoles. And in English, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, Saturday, Sunday, Monday, Tuesday, and back to Wednesday. That means What's tomorrow? Tomorrow is, let's see, Wednesday, Thursday. Thursday is tomorrow. What's the day after tomorrow? Oh, let's see, Wednesday, Thursday. Friday is the day after tomorrow. What was yesterday? Oh, today's Wednesday. That means yesterday was t -t Tuesday. What was the day before yesterday? Oh, well, today was Wednesday. Yesterday was Tuesday. That means the day before that was, let's say, Monday, Tuesday. Monday was the day before yesterday. That is rather complicated and confusing, but you will learn it if you just keep saying them Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, Saturday, and in Spanish as well. So, let's see. Day and date. Okay, so Auntie Jackie did have, um, did have a, uh, she's traveling today. She's on an airplane this morning, but she sent me, um, she sent me a audio recording of her telling a story and I thought I would just play that for you and while I play that for you I'm going to now I'm just gonna play it for you our book today is log hotel it's written by hey. Ann Schreiber log hotel log hotel this koa tree has been living in the forest for a hundred years. One day, a strong wind knocks the tree down. The tree falls to the ground. Now the tree is a log. Soon, ants and beetles move in and eat the log. They drill small tunnels in the log as they eat. The tunnels help to make this log soft as it decays. This woodpecker is listening for bugs inside the log. As soon as it hears a bug, it drills through the bark to catch it. Tap, 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 tap. Tap, 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 tap. Soon, living things called fungi grow on the log. Inside the log, fungi look like spaghetti. Outside the log, fungi look like mushrooms. Mm. Snails and slugs move in. They creep through the tunnels as they hunt for fresh fungi and dead beetles and ants to eat. The tunnels get bigger. The log gets softer. A snake slithers through the log 
It is looking for a place to rest for the winter. Soft moss grows on the log. Green ferns grow in and around the log. This log is like a plant and animal hotel. As time goes on, more and more plants and animals move in. The log gets softer and softer. Now the shape of the log is hard to see. Earthworms eat what's left of the log. The earthworms turn what they eat into soil. The soil is the perfect place for a seed to grow. The seed will grow into a tree. One day, the tree will fall. It too will become a log hotel. All right, well, I tried to keep up with her. That is called a nurse log. I drew it along with the story. Kind of small to see back there. I tried to draw the, the log with the spaghetti, white spaghetti uh, inside the mycelium. That's part of the fungus that she mentioned. And then the little mushrooms grow on top there. They're actually connected to those. I should probably draw these little, because they're really, they've got all these little things that look like roots coming out of the bottom of them. And then the moss grows on top, and this purple snake down there, and the woodpecker up there, peck, peck, pecking. And then the ferns grow, and then the seed starts to grow as the ants and bugs and slugs eat up all the wood that's down there and decomposes and gets softer and softer and softer. Isn't that cool? Reminds me in the tiptoes story how the, the fish, they had fish going up the stream. You, unless you listened to the read aloud during the break, you didn't know this, but fish and flowers both grow and then leave their seeds or eggs somewhere so that the new generation can grow. All right, so that's that. We're, uh, we gotta count backwards from 100 now. We're gonna start by counting backwards from 10. Nine, eight, seven, six, five, four. Get ready to blast off. Three, two, one, blast off. All right, so we'll count back from 100. So hopefully we've been practicing going forward, and now we'll go practice going backward. 99, 100 first. 100, 99, 98, 97, 96, 95, 94, 93, 92, 91, 90. Say it with me as best you can. 89, 88, 87, 86, 85, 80, 80, 80, 81, 80, 79, 78. 77, 76, 75, 74, 73, 72, 71, 70, 69, 68, 67, 66, 65, 64, 63, 62, 61, 60, 59, 58, 57, 56, 55, try 54, 53, 52, 51, 50, 49, 48, 47, 46, 45, 44, 43, 42, 41, 40, 39, 38, 37, 36, 35, 34, 33, 32, 31, 30, 29, 28, 27, 26, 25, 24, 23, 21, 20, oops, 19, 18, 17, 16, 15, 14, 
15, 13, 12, 11, 10, 9, 8, 7, 6, 5, 4, 3, 2, 1. Blast off. All right. Um, that's a good thing to practice when you're in the car or any old time with your family. All right, new shoes, stand up, get ready to point your toes, jump sideways, and all the rest. Here we go. New shoes, ready? Start again. New shoes, new shoes, jump. Red, cross, brown, and blue shoes. Fat shoes and flat shoes and stomp around like that. Shoes, which shoes shall I choose? New shoes, new shoes, red and brown and blue shoes, fat shoes and flat shoes and stomp around the fat shoes. Which shoes shall I choose? Okay, a little movement. Now we are going to draw the king. So main lesson book, crayons, crayons, beeswax crayons, some of you have those and a new page, so you should look at your main lesson book, open it up page by page from the very beginning, and see if there's any blank pages that you missed. And if you did, just use that page. So, I'll show you my drawing. Okay. So this is the finished drawing, and it looks kind of hard, maybe, but we can do it. Do you see how he's in the shape of a K? Uh, uh, uh. And we'll draw another K over there. It looks like if we have room. If yours ended up not having room, that's okay. Okay, so this was a little bit tricky for me, uh, but I just started with this line. I started with this line because I knew that I wanted this line to be a straight line, and I cheated it. I leaned it forward just a little bit. I didn't make it perfectly vertical. I leaned it just a little bit because I wanted to have him leaning forward. So we're gonna start with just this line right here. We're gonna start at where the shoulder is and just draw a straight line like that. And then we're gonna just come up here and curve the shoulder. You'll see, we'll do it together. Okay. Now, put that there. Is that gonna work? Okay. So my page is going to be about this big, and the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to draw the ground. The ground is going to be just a little bit just like that, kind of like the border, isn't it? That and that make up two sides of the border, don't they? So just going to put a line. down there so this would be the bottom of your page down here and there's a line down there somewhere near the bottom all right changing colors and you can use any color to start with I like to start with yellow because that way I'm just I'm just a little more confident that I can change it if I make a mistake okay so I don't like my head out of the camera but oh well I'd like you to be able to see the drawing, finished drawing too. Okay, I'll just slump over a little bit and that way you can see me better. It's not very good posture, Mr. Coulter. All right, so um, I don't want to start way up here because up here is going to be that tree area up there. It's going to be up there and his crown is going to be somewhere up here. I'm just going to start there and make a line pretty much straight down. Pretty much straight down. If it was a K, I would you know, draw it like that. But I'm gonna just 
make that his back, okay? And I'm just gonna go like that for his shoulder, and I'm gonna go ahead and mark where his neck's gonna be because I kind of forgot to put the neck on him before. Okay, so that's that's that. All right, now I'm gonna I'm gonna draw his foot. So there's his foot, and I'm gonna curve it up like that. I'm gonna bring it right up part way, like that. I can fix the shape later. I'm not gonna worry too much about it right now. And then this leg coming down like that. And there's the foot. And I'm gonna curve it up. And then I'm gonna come up again. Again, I can fix it later. It's okay. And then I think it's a little tricky now. So I've got the legs. I've got where I think the shoulder is gonna be got where the head's going to be. Maybe I'll just sort of sketch in, put, in, put a little head up there, the shadow of a head, so I can see where it's going to be and what it's going to look like. I'm going to come and I'm going to finish this. This leg is already finished to here, but I'm going to bring it up a little higher. And then I'm going to put his, go ahead and do this. So you can see the shape of the K coming here. It's down there. It's going to be here and there. But this is going to be the arm and then the sword. About halfway in there, I'm going to put a fist, and I'm going to go ahead and put that hilt on the sword. I'm going to make this arm a little thicker. It's a little bit pointy like that. That's okay, because it's thin here, and it's thicker there. That's his elbow. And then I'm going to draw this part of his arm, this part of his arm. So he's standing like this. One foot forward, or have this foot forward. I can't even tell in my drawing which way it's supposed to be. But his, sh his shoulder is like that. His arm is like this. And then comes up. His shoulder kind of too big. Shoulder. So this ended up a little too short for how long this is. And this is supposed to come up all the way to the neck. I'm just going to make the neck here with the head there. If the head ends up a little too big, that's OK. Mine's too small. OK. I'm going to put this line here for where the crown is going to separate from the hair. Just to make myself feel better, I'm going to go ahead and put this crown up here. Now I'm going to try and see if I can adjust the lengths of some of these limbs a little bit here. So this leg, these legs are a little short. That's okay. I'm going to put a waist, I'm going to put a waist on him here. And then his tunic comes down to a little further, so I'm just going to put that right there. I'm just going to make that line. Okay. So this is my gold I'm using now. If you're using yellow, you could put a switch to gold, make the belt gold, make the crown gold. You could uh, leave the sword gold. I ended up with blue on my sword. I think I'll. Uh, I think I'll. I'll leave it gold. I only have like four colors, of, four or five colors of chalk. And they're going to be a little different than your crayons. And it's holding on. You might want to switch to a brown now. Let's get his face a little more darker color. Same with his hand. And I guess the neck could also be brown. He's looking sideways. You could bump a nose out a little bit there if you want to. All right. Now I'm switching to, um, let's see, I think you have a purple-ish color um, and a red color. So you're going to get your purple and your red. I'm going to have to use this pink and purple. 
and we're going to have different parts of the body are different colors. So we'll, let's start down at the boots, and we'll put the boots on, purple. Okay? You can put lines like that, or you can just color it in and go over the outside color like that. This one too. I think you're so brave for trying these drawings. I know some of us, we don't, some people don't mind doing drawings. I never liked drawing very much, and I didn't feel like I was very good at it. I frustrated all the time, but I learned that, um, I guess I just kept on trying is what I did. Okay, so we have the king there, like that. Now, I'm gonna, I guess I could switch to my Actually, I think I'll stay with this same color and go up and do this part. I'll do this forearm area here. He's got like a big long fighting glove on maybe or something. Wish that was a little longer. I'm gonna cheat it forward a little bit more. Cheat it down a little bit. There we go. And we could put a line right there between his forearm. His glove may come up all the way to there over his elbow, it looks like. All right, and then this rest of this outfit here. I'm not going to cover up the belt. I think that arm got a little too big. I'm going to try to shave a little off here by making this part come over it. And then I'm going to switch to my pinkish color here. I think we're using red. Better bring that right up to the neck. And I, it got too big, so I'm just gonna ignore that part for now. Maybe I'll have to come back and put it back in, or maybe I can cover it up with this background color. We'll see. All right, this is also a mistake, this little spot right here. I'm gonna try to fix that. Well, we're gonna have to leave that for now. background color is going to cover that. And then the red is going to come down here on his legs. Go all the way over the line that I originally drew. And um, This was the king of the gnomes, the crystal king of the gnomes, who taught the pine cone and pepper pot how to make, how to grow crystals. This yellow line really shouldn't be there. Maybe I should cover that with purple. But this was supposed to stay yellow or gold. You could switch to an orange for this. And I even put like sort of a belt buckle kind of thing on the front there. All right, that's pretty good. Um, let's get him some hair so you can use your black. And I just drew hair like that, kind of like. Under the crown. And if you want to just put a little line for the eye, just a little line, it's good. And I put a little line where the mouth might be, trying to make him smiling or crying. Just make the mouth a little too low, or if the nose is a little too high is what's going on there. And make the nose a little longer by bringing it down a little farther. There you go, good enough. All right, now we need our blue. His legs are a little too short for who he is, but you know, it's okay. All right, now I'm gonna take my blue and uh, my thinking here, if I do this, yeah, I can just go ahead and do the whole background in blue because I can drew, draw this brown over the blue and it will look even more like a tree. And the same with the brown that's down here at the bottom. So I'm just gonna put a blue, uh, blue block crayon to work here. 
and I'm going to try to cover up this spot. I'm not going to work too hard at it because I know I can't really cover it up completely. I'm just going to go over it so if I squint my eyes, maybe I, maybe I won't see that mistake. All right. So just working the background, let's do the whole thing in blue. Let's go kind of light though back here where the tree is going to be. Poor pine cone and pepper pot, they embarrass themselves by talking about the gnome king, talking badly about other people. Never a good plan, especially if they're not there. At least if you're going to say something about somebody, they should be there to listen. Right? Oh, talking badly about people. So never a good plan. Can't help it sometimes. We're frustrated with somebody or... It's hard to be around somebody for some reason. Oh, but Pinecone and Pepperpot, they got in trouble. They started talking bad about the king. And he was listening. They had to scrape their noses right along the ground to <laughs> try to make up for it, show their respect. But I think this, the story that the king told helped show them a little, teach them a little bit of a lesson, didn't it? Yeah. All right. So there's the background. Now I'm going to come and do the ground again. And I, I did this little squigglies. These are like, I just did a lot of little tiny little squiggles. Don't, don't get too big, you know. Just do little, little squigglies like that. It takes a while. You come right up into the line that you drew before. This is a stick crayon work, of course. Lots and lots of little squiggles, which I think end up looking a bit like forest floor, you know, dried leaves on the forest floor. I'm going to work at this for a little while. And so that it doesn't feel like it's going to be endless. You can take your brown block crayon and just do a light coating over everything. And then come back. And maybe we'll feel like we don't have to do quite as many of these squiggles because it takes a long time. That's okay. Good work. It takes patience, doesn't it? Where I used to live, there was a bird called a killdeer. Killdeer starts with K. Kill starts with K, and king starts with K, and k, k, k makes a lot of different sounds. A lot of different words start with a k sound, even if it's a, really a C. this kind of quickly and later I can come back and fill that in some more. Now I'm going to take my green and I'm going to put some little tufts of grass. Some of them are going to be up here, some of them are going to be down there, just in a few random places. I always make my tufts of grass starting from the bottom and coming up. That, that's how grass grows, of course. All right, that's pretty good. Um, and then I'm going to put my tree in. So I'm going back to brown. And the tree roots are down here. So I'm even going to start down here and draw this line for the tree roots coming up. And I'm not going to draw a perfectly straight line. I'm going to let it be a little bumpy. And then I'm going to come out over the king's head. If there's not room for yours because your king was too big, that's fine. If your branch comes in a little sooner because the king is very small, that's okay too. And I'm just going to stop right about there. And then I'm going to, uh, then I'm going to come up here. So the tree goes way up high, out of our sight. We come down a little ways and then back up. So it's another branch. Stop right about there. And then the other side of this branch comes in and then curves back out to this branch, and then again stops right about there. Now I can't stand to see that blue sky behind there, so I'm gonna use my brown crayon to fill that in. I'm gonna come all the way down here, push a little harder. Your blue will show up through a little bit more, but that's okay. You can go over it with a 
a third color like orange or purple and really make it like a nice sunset tree. Okay, now green stick and just kind of a bumpy, a little uneven looking, another branch. I can't even see the branch, but the leaves are coming. And then inside, a few more bumpies. Over here, same thing, bumpies. Inside, bumpies. And then take your green block crayon and go like that. And fill in the whole leafy area. Okay. What did I forget? Hmm, looks pretty good. You may, like I said, want to take your uh, purple and go over this tree a little bit, give it a little more depth of color. I even like to take my gold, have the, cut in a couple places, just put a little bit of gold, give it a little highlight. And then if you need to, you can come back and fix your king a little bit. You might want to fix his, uh, in my case, I see I want to smooth out his skin color here a little bit more. A little messy looking. All right. So that is the king drawing. And um, if you um, have space over here, you could draw the K. You can see in my king, the letter K, K is showing up here like that. Um, I almost don't have space in mine, but I think I'll use my blue because I said I was gonna try to do this. And I'm gonna put a K right there. I might start a little lower. So about from as high as the king's shoulder. In my case, I have room, but if you don't, it's okay. Right to the middle of this line. See how it's the top, bottom, middle? And this one goes out to land about underneath where this one started. So there's my K for king. And I'll do it here with chalk. like so. And now we will turn to our main lesson page and do the upper and lower case K as we talked about. So in my case, I didn't do this in my main lesson book yet, but uh, if you have room next to your J, then you can do it there. If you need a new page, then we'll do it down here. So this is my page. And I think I'll start it over again so that you can do it along with me. This is my page right down here. And um, I will put a border. border. And I will put a dotted line. So if this is my space to write in, if I imagine this as my border, my space to write in. Halfway between this point and this point is about right here. So if I put a line right there, does it look like it's about in the middle? 
I think it does. I'm going to put a little really light line or a, even a dashed line all the way across. Now I'm going to do a little background, I guess. I'm using purple this time in my background. Red and purple were the royal colors for a long time. All the royal people wore red or purple. And in fact, red was very difficult to make for a long time. Only some people could make a really good red. With certain flowers or certain bugs actually turned out to make a really good, a really good um, red color. So it's really so royal people wore red because it was hard to make that red. So they, something special for them, I guess, was the idea. So red and purple for a long time were the royal colors, and kings tried to wear it as much as they could. And I'm going to use this uh, pinkish color. You can use red if you want. I don't usually like to write in red, but because it's a K for king, I guess we go for it. There's my vertical line. I'm going to aim for this spot right there in the middle. And go back down and end underneath that spot. And there's my uppercase K. Lowercase k, same tall line, but the other part starts down here at the halfway point, but otherwise it's the same idea. Starts at the halfway point, goes to this place, which is halfway between the halfway and the bottom, so a quarter of the way up from the bottom is to there. One quarter, two quarters, three quarters, four quarters, make a dollar, or a whole thing. We'll learn about that some other day, but just throw it out there so you hear it. You already know what half is. Now you know that half of a half is up to there. All right, so there's our uppercase and lowercase k. Poor pine cone and pepper pot had their crowns grow tall. Reminds me of another story about someone whose nose grew too tall. Pinocchio. So that's a good story to read, uh, maybe in second grade. All right. I think that's about it for K and the King. Keep, k k keep working on that drawing. If you have a, something to open your car or your door, it's called a k k key. That starts with K. And keep and key and king and kill and k k kangaroo. Kangaroo. All right, I have a new story for you. I have a story I'd like to tell you now. And this story is called The Peasant's Wise Daughter. The Peasant's Wise Daughter. So the daughter of a peasant. A peasant is a Someone who uh, is not the king and is not royal at all and is not in the court at all, but you know works on the land and um, doesn't have very much money. So um, back in the old days, in the bad old days, maybe. All right. But the peasant had a very wise daughter, and here's how the story goes. There was a man who had a daughter, and they were very poor. They only had a little house and not even any land to plant any crops. So they went to the king and asked for some land because they are very poor. The king heard their story and gave them a small plot of not very good land, but it was something. And it was all tilled up and ready to go. So they went out to go plant their corn and other grains out in the field. And as they were digging around in the dirt and getting ready to, making the dirt nice and fluffy and ready to plant in, they discovered something very special. They discovered a golden mortar. 
What's a mortar? Well, I brought one to show you. A mortar is this. It's a stone. In my case, it's stone. It can be pottery sometimes. A bowl. And it always comes with one of these as a pestle. And you use it to grind up spices. Reminds me of a poi pounder too, doesn't it? So this is, I can still smell the cloves and different things, cinnamon sticks I put in there to grind up to make some tea sometimes. So this is a mortar, mortar and pestle. They found a golden mortar in the ground. And the father thought, you know, the king was so nice to give us this land in which we found this mortar that we should present it to him as a gift, as a present. The daughter said, bad idea, bad idea, dad. If we give him the golden mortar, he's just gonna say, what about the pestle? Go get me the golden pestle. But the father would hear none of it and decided that he wanted to present the golden mortar to the king. Well, he brought it up, gave it to the king, and sure enough, the king said, did you find anything else? And he said, no, didn't find anything else. King said, go get find the pestle. He's like, no, we looked everywhere. So the king threw him in prison, and there he stayed. And the king said he couldn't come out until his daughter brought the pestle. Well, months went by, and every day the guards would bring down his bread and water, which is all they gave, they gave them in prison. And every day... The man was down there saying, why didn't I listen to my daughter? Why, oh why, oh why did I not listen to my daughter? Well, the guards eventually end up telling the courtiers or the, or the advisor to the king. And the king found out that he was down there lamenting that he didn't, that he was so sad that he hadn't listened to his daughter. The king got kind of curious about this and decided he was going to ask the peasant why he would say that all the time. And see, he shared, why do you say this? Well, I say it because my daughter indeed said, don't give the mortar to the king because he'll just ask for the pestle and no good will ever come of it. And the king thought, you know, that's pretty smart. She knew exactly what was going to happen. Your daughter is that smart. Let's see if she can answer this riddle. I've got a riddle for her. And if she can answer my riddle, I'll be so impressed with how smart and wise she is, I believe I'd like to marry her. <laughs> so he sent messengers to go get the daughter, and the daughter agreed. And here's the riddle. He said, come to me, not naked, but not clothed. Come to be neither riding nor walking. And come to me either neither by the road nor off the road. And if you can do that, you've answered my riddle, and I believe I'd like to marry you. <laughs> so, of course, she was very happy. She's a peasant, and uh, she thought, well, that's a good challenge. She liked a good challenge, and she liked his thinking. So she thought, okay, what am I going to do? So she took off her clothes, and she wrapped herself all up in a fishnet. She wasn't clothed, but nor was she naked. And then she tied, she got, a, she borrowed a donkey, and she tied the fishnet to the donkey so that the donkey would drag her all the way to the palace. Hmm, she's not walking, nor is she riding. She got dragged. And then she said, donkey's going to drive me in the ruts, down in the ruts, like the ditches, the ditch part of the road. So she, and he, she dragged her toe along the road, just one toe. So she wasn't really on the road, because she was down in the ditch, the rut. Nor was she off the road, because she wasn't off the road. She was there. So when the king saw her, he laughed and thought, that is a very wise young woman. And so the young king decided that he would like to marry her, and she agreed. And, uh, and uh, they let the father out of prison, and they were very happy. So the other thing he did is he said, you know, you're so smart. I'm going to make you in charge of all the, all the possessions, all the royal possessions we have. You're, you're in charge of them because 
you're just very smart, obviously. So years passed, and uh, one day the king was out in the, um, out in the, uh, he's bringing his, his troops, his, his armies out, out and about for a big parade. Kings like to do that. They have a big parade with all the soldiers and horses and everything, and there were some peasants, some poor people who were selling firewood in the, in the streets, and they had wagons being pulled. Some of them had wagons being pulled by uh, horses, and others had wagons being pulled by oxen, and oxen are basically cattle, uh, cows, uh, and, uh, or bulls, kind of like bulls, and um, big, big oxen, yeah. And uh, so the, one of the peasants who had uh, three horses one of them had given birth recently to a little foal, a little baby horse. And the baby horse was, you know, just following along with its mother, right, obviously, as the peasant drove the team of horses around with his wagon full of firewood. Well, the, as they were stopped to watch the parade, the foal kind of wandered away and, and lay down between a couple of the oxen at the other peasant. And uh, then the, after the parade went by, the king was still on his platform watching, and he saw this argument taking place between the peasant who had the oxen and the peasant who had the horses. And the peasant who had the oxen said, oh, this, no, this is my foal. Look, it's lying right there between the oxen. And the other peasant said, yeah, no, it's my foal. It followed along. My horse gave birth to it very recently, and, uh, you know, she's just following along here. The oxen said, no, no, no. One of my, the, peasant, the other peasant said, no, 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 the oxen, one of my oxen gave, uh, gave birth to that foal. And they had this argument and asked for the king to resolve their argument. And the argument was resolved by the king in this manner. The king said, well, the foal, leave the foal with where it wandered. Give it to the peasant who had the oxen. The other guy was like, what? How could that fare? That's my foal. Just because it wandered over there does not make it his. And certainly a little ridiculous to think that an oxen, which is a male, first of all, uh, not a female, could give birth to a foal. How ridiculous. So he went away, very upset, weeping, crying, the loss of his dear little foal. Well, this peasant had heard that the queen of the land was a very fair-minded woman, and she had been a peasant once, and so she might have understood the plight of the, the poor people. And so she, uh, so the peasant asked for an audience with the queen, and the queen uh, um, said that was okay and listened to the story and agreed that the king had decided this very foolishly. And she said, well, I'll help you, but you can't tell anybody ever that this was my idea. So here's what you do. The king's going to be passing by tomorrow. You go out in the road with a fishnet and, uh, and look like you're fishing for fish in the road. And when the king asks, what in the world are you doing? You say, I'm fishing. And when he says, that's ridiculous, you can't fish on dry land, you say, yeah, it's about as ridiculous as an oxen giving birth to a foal. And maybe he'll see the light. Hmm. So this is what happened. The king was coming by. The peasant pretended to fish in the road. The messenger came over and said, the king wants to know what you're doing. He said, I'm fishing. The messenger told the king. The king said, what in the world is he thinking? He can't fish for dry fish on the land. And the messenger asked the peasant, and the peasant replied, well, it's as absurd. If, I, if, a, if, a, if, a, if a oxen can give birth to a foal, then I can catch fish in the dry road. Uh, the king, oh, I could kind of tell that something was wrong with this picture. So he called the guy over and said, whose idea was that to tell me that? He's like, oh, it was my idea, I promise. No, I don't believe you. And so they beat him until he, until he had to admit that it was the queen's idea. And the queen, king went home very angry that the queen should uh, meddle in the affairs of his judgment of the situation, even though he was wrong. And he said, you know what? I'm not having you for a wife any longer. I feel like it was a lie to me, and you have to go packing and go back to your peasant house. But I'll tell you something. You can do one thing. Okay. I really liked, I really loved you, but, you know, so mad, you have to go, I'm getting rid of you. But you could choose one of the possessions, anything that is most, you could, not one of the possessions, you could take with you whatever is 
most precious to you and most dear to your eyes. Take with you whatever it is that you, that you want, one thing. And so she said, okay, if that's what you command, that's what I'll do. She ordered then a sleeping potion to be made. And when the, to toast and have a drink and just sort of celebrate a final drink together with, with her dear husband. And so they drank together, and she just took a tiny sip, and he took a big drink. And sure enough, he was fast asleep within an hour. And the queen ordered, she's still the queen, so she still gets to order. She ordered the servants come and wrap him up in a, in a linen cloth and put him in a carriage and bring him out to her old house. She arrives to her old little house, peasant little hut, <laughs> way out in the country, and orders the servants to place him down on her little old bed where she used to sleep. And uh, he slept soundly for a day and a half, and he finally woke up. Where in the world am I? What's happened? How could I be here? And he's calling for his servants. He doesn't know where he is. doesn't know how he got there. He calls for his servants. Nobody comes. He's completely uh, surprised and shocked and a little freaked out. And then she comes. His wife, former wife, comes and says, oh, you told me to take with me whatever was most precious and most dear to my eyes. And that's you, my dear husband. You are most precious to me of all the things in the kingdom. Well, the king laughed and cried at the same time, was so happy, realized that he loved his dear wife dearly, wise as she was, and said, let's go back to the palace and live together. And for all I know, they're happily living there still. <laughs> I like that story. So it was, and so it is, and so it shall be. <laughs>